What's up world, this is Brad from Project Build Stuff and today I'm showing you five keys to any garage makeover. If you're anything like me, your garage has become so much more than just a place to park your cars. It's an additional workspace for all your hobbies and side hustles and we gotta make this work for us. For me, I love building and making anything but all of these tips will work for whatever you do in your space. The first key to any garage makeover is a good clean, and my garage was a mess. I know we all have a lot of junk in our garage, so it's best to pull everything out of it so we have a nice, clean slate to work with. You wanna optimize this space for exactly what you're gonna use it for, so pulling everything out is a must. Leaf blowers are for more than just leaves. They're also great for cleaning up years worth of dirt and dust out of your garage. Now that I got this place cleaned up a little bit, I can see what I have, and I've pulled some things out of dusty, dark corners they've been in for years. This is the perfect opportunity to sell off some things you don't need anymore. I found a bunch of old tools I haven't used in years, and I'm gonna sell these off on Facebook Marketplace and help pay for the rest of the things that need to be done in this garage. I ended up making 285 on all of this and I'm gonna put it right back into the garage makeover. We're gonna be spending a lot of time in the garage so climate control is a must and that starts with insulation. I got lucky here in Indiana that my garage was already insulated by the builder but if yours isn't, it is crucial to get as much insulation in the walls as possible. I did have one small section of the garage that wasn't insulated so I'm gonna be using some bat insulation to seal up this area and make sure we keep the cold and heat out of the garage. To cover up the insulation, I'm gonna use a spare sheet of plywood I had sitting around, which should do the trick. Once our walls are insulated, there's one more place we need to pay attention to, and that's the garage door. Your garage door is a huge factor in the climate control of your garage, so it's really important to make sure it's insulated as well. I got super lucky that my garage door was already insulated, but if yours isn't, there's some awesome kits out there for home DIY garage door insulation. I'll leave a link down in the description to Jason Bent's video that you see now, and he'll walk you through everything you need to know on how to insulate your garage door. Even with great insulation, it can still get really hot in the garage in these hot Midwest summers. So what I do to keep it cool is a portable air conditioner that I have permanently installed here in the garage. I vent the heat out through a hole in the wall and it's a great cost-effective way to keep the heat at least bearable so I can work out here during the summer. I have a full video on the installation of this that I'll link down in the description. During these cold Indiana winters, a Mr. Heater Big Buddy does a great job of warming up the garage and making it super comfortable regardless of what the temperature is outside. Now that the garage is feeling great, let's make it look great and focus on the walls. The unfinished drywall look is definitely not the vibe I was going for in this garage, and it was made even worse when the former owner ran his boat into the wall and had to put this big patch up. Let's get these walls cleaned up and ready for paint. My walls were in really rough shape with lots of holes and exposed drywall tape. So I'm cleaning it all up with the back of a putty knife, pushing any defects in so I can cover over them with some drywall mud. When you run into these super annoying popped screws that won't tighten down or come out, they're super easy to fix. Drill in a couple screws right next to the one you wanna remove and it makes it so much easier to get it out. Our walls are all prepped, let's move to mudding. Because my walls were really rough, it made the most sense to use drywall mud to fill in all of the issues and get them nice and smooth before painting. If your walls are in good shape, you might be able to skip this step or even just get a small tub of spackle and fill in any holes. A quick reminder, paint will not hide any errors in your wall, it will only highlight them. So it's really smart to give it a good sand before you roll that paint on to make sure it's nice and smooth. Our walls are all ready to go. Let's get to painting. Let's go. 
because we're working in a garage with exposed drywall and potential weather elements from the outdoors, it's really important to use a good primer before putting on any paint. I have a good latex primer here, which is gonna help seal the drywall as well as protect it from any mold or mildew. Whenever you're painting a large area like this, don't use a hand roller or a brush. Use a roller on a pole. It's so much easier. In the areas that don't have drywall, I use some thin plywood to cover up the walls as best as possible. It's not a perfect solution, but it's cheap, easy, and looks way better than exposed insulation. Step four, let's look at the electrical and lighting. If your garage is anything like mine, it's way underpowered with not nearly enough outlets. I only had three outlets powering my entire shop with a tangle of extension cords all over the place. It wasn't only impractical, it was also dangerous. On top of that, I only had one 15 amp circuit that powered the entire garage, so I was popping circuits constantly. It was such an annoyance. If your garage power sucks like mine, I'm here to tell you it's not super difficult to fix. We're gonna add a few new circuits and outlets in the garage to make it way more useful. The first thing we're gonna need to do is find our circuit breaker. For me, it's down in the basement, which isn't ideal, but I'm gonna make it work. But you might get lucky and have it in your garage, which will be way easier. I had a small area of wall between my garage and my basement that were shared that I'm able to run the cords through. Lucky me. Next, we're gonna install our junction boxes. These are really easy to install. I just used a piece of two x four as a spacer and drilled them in. To connect the junction boxes and run the wires through, I'm just using some PVC conduit. It's easy to measure and cut to whatever length you need. It's super important to know the very last thing when running electrical is connecting the wires to the circuit breaker. I'm pushing the unconnected wire down into the basement and it'll be the last thing I deal with. In total, I decided to install six junction boxes with four outlets in each. So it's gonna give me tons of flexibility to plug in any tools or equipment I have. A fish tape is a game changer for running wires through a conduit like this. Let me show you how it works. Push the tape through the conduit in the opposite direction that you want to pull the wire. Then tape your wire to the tape and pull it through. You have to use your big muscles for this, but it makes it so much easier than trying to fish the loose limp wire through. With the junction boxes and conduit all installed, the next step is installing our outlets. This isn't a very exciting job, so I'll spare you all the details, but if it's something you're really interested in knowing more about, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll make an in-depth video on it in the future. Okay, we got all of our outlets wired up. The last step is to connect both of our home run lines from our two circuits into the electrical panel. I'm not gonna walk through this step by step because I'm not a licensed electrician. If this is something you wanna do in your own shop, be sure to reach out to a licensed electrician in your area and have them help you out with this. Electricity isn't something to play with. With all the new outlets installed, I finally have enough power out here in the garage to add a few more lights to really brighten this place up. And I almost forgot, a pull down extension cord is a must in any garage. Last but not least, let's talk about how we're gonna store and organize all of our stuff. The first thing I'm gonna do is maximize my wall space. I'm gonna get as many things up on the wall so they're easy to see and grab as possible. Another area we often neglect to utilize for storage is the ceiling. 
I have a few things I use all the time that are pretty large but pretty light and I found that the ceiling is the perfect place to store them. It keeps them nice and accessible but out of the way when I'm not using them. Whenever organizing in a small or confined space, it's important to think like a Tetris player. This compressor fit perfectly under my workbench, which saved me a ton of space. As a woodworker, I had a ton of long, thin lumber around and I was running out of space. So it was time to build a few wall racks so I could store it all. These racks work great for lumber, but they're also perfect for anything long and skinny you might want to store. They only use a couple of 2x4s and some metal conduit, so they're really cheap and easy to make. And for the finishing touch of my garage organization, I'm going to be installing some OmniWall. OmniWall is a metal pegboard alternative that does an excellent job organizing all those most reached for items in your garage. It's super easy to install. You'll only need a level, drill, and a hammer, and it'll be up in no time. One of the main reasons why I love my OmniWall is because of the wide variety of attachments that work with the system. They have tons of custom holders as well as shelves and hooks, so regardless of what I've wanted to store, I've always been able to find something that works. I am so happy with how the garage turned out and I hope you learned something along the way. While you're here, check out some of my other YouTube videos and until next time, it's your turn, go build stuff.